father, my father, my father, my father, my father. You're dead. So the ladies over at The View decided to weigh in on Hillary Clinton's latest round of attacks on Bernie Sanders, and you are going to be stunned to learn that they sided with Hillary Clinton. Yeah, pretty big shocker. Well, let's find out what they had to say. Um, as usual, this was a dumpster fire of a segment. Hillary Clinton does not hold back her feelings on former rival Bernie Sanders in an upcoming documentary. Hillary. Are we wearing the same jacket? You might be. <laughs> you might be. <laughs> Sorry. Close. Sorry. Close. Hillary's like, nobody likes it. Nobody likes it. Nobody wants to work with him. He's a, he's a career politician. It's all just baloney. I feel so bad that people got sucking into it. <laughs> and she's standing by these words. And, and you know, after this weekend of uh, really a lot of... What do you like? To, what do you call them? The faux pas? Faux pas. The, the, a lot the, of faux pas. A lot of faux pas. He was faux pieing everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> you he know, really he, Bernie. Yes, I yeah. mean, you know, yeah. the Bernie bros were catching him. I mean, he, so, you he know. Had you had to apologize several times. Yes. Yeah. It's stupid so, thing. I mean. And by the way, we, I would like to take the view started this. Like, we were, we said, like, we're not feeling Bernie. And we got a lot of heat for it. And all of a sudden, it feels like a lot of people in the media and voters are following. And this Bernie bro problem that she's talking about, mm -hmm. she was patient zero when yeah, it comes to it. And I, again, the Bernie bros did a lot of damage to her. And I think going forward, you shouldn't underestimate their power and what they could do specifically to female candidates. And but you can, don't underestimate Hillary Clinton's power. She still has it. She oh, won yeah. by three million votes. I wouldn't. Absolutely. Yeah. People yeah. still like her. And you know what? After that Howard Stern interview, mm -hmm. we've seen the true Hillary. And I think she's it's fabulous. I think it's very important for people to note that Bernie registered to run for the Senate in 2024 as an independent, yet runs is running as a Democrat for the president. He is a Democrat by default. By default. And well, you really need to want understand that. You want him out. He just, they just need well, to but, understand that. But this has been my bitch with people running who are socialists. And I love socialists. But if you're a socialist, find other people. Find your party, people in your party to support you. Don't Say you're a Democrat and then try to poop all over the Democratic folks. That's their, they're spouting what they believe. If you believe what you believe, then run as where you are. Let us see you. And if we like what you're saying, then people will, will vote for you. But you can't say you're one thing and then pretend to be something else and just but people I, point you out. So, I love you the know. socialists, too. I've slept yeah. with several. <laughs> <laughs> My God. <laughs> I married a couple. <laughs> if this show were to ever be canceled, I think that the IQ of America collectively would be raised by at least 10 points. Like, this show is bad, and these are all individuals who are incredibly misinformed. The only person who I think actually knows about politics is Sonny Hostin, but her view is bad. It's elitist. It's, you know, establishment. So, I mean... This is just awful. It's nothing but conjecture, if you can even call it that. It's just garbage, right? Um, and of course I'm salty because they're going after my boy Bernie Sanders. But, um, you know, it's just, I'm tired of this. These are out-of-touch elite people who are all multimillionaires who will never have to worry about needing something, right? So no matter who is elected, a Democrat or a Republican, they will be taken care of because they have so much money that no matter what the government does or doesn't do, they're going to be cool. So that's why when I see them rich splay in American politics and, you know, be little Bernie Sanders and his supporters, it's infuriating. And at this point, like, it's what we have come to expect from The View. But we shouldn't, you know, get used to this because this really is morally reprehensible. So now addressing some of the specific things that they said, Meghan McCain said, the view started this. We said like, we're not feeling Bernie and we got a lot of heat for it. And all of a sudden it feels like a lot of people in media and voters are following. So for her to say this, it suggests that she's actually talked to real people. Who have you talked to, Meghan? Really? So of course the media is speaking out because they've hated Bernie Sanders. They only, you know, talked about him nicely and interviewed him in, you know, 2017 and 2018 when he wasn't running for office and wasn't really a threat to get power because that helped their ratings because he's very popular. But now they're all shitting on him. That's no surprise to anyone. But I mean, like in terms of the normal people who are speaking out against Bernie, who, what peasants have you spoken to? Have you left your mansion to talk to normal people, Megan? Really? I mean, let's check her Twitter and see if she's engaged with anyone recently. Oh, would you look at that? Looks like she has uh, 
blocked me. <laughs> I mean, was it something I said, Megan? Was it me telling you that you are an out of touch elitist who is only there at the view because you are the beneficiary of nepotism, even though you are a talentless hack? Was it that maybe? <laughs> Look, she is not engaging with normal Americans. It's just people in her own elite establishment bubbles. And that's it. Normal people aren't coming to Megan saying, oh, thank God you, you know, you spoke out against Bernie Sanders. Now I can finally, you know, espouse my true feelings. No, nobody's telling you that. I don't believe you. Now, on top of that, she said this Bernie Roll problem she was talking about, she was patient zero. The Bernie bros did a lot of damage to her, and I think going forward, you shouldn't under underestimate their power and what they can do specifically to female candidates. Oh, okay, because we just, we don't like candidates specifically because they're female. It's not like we, you know, also don't like Joe Biden. It's not like we also don't like any other establishment shill. We just don't like the candidates because they're female. But she is right about one thing. We do have power now, not political power, but we do have influence. And what are we doing to female candidates? Well, um, if you ask AOC, Bernie bros are the ones who are helping her get elected. And now, since she's in office, she has become the voice of our generation. We are defending women against relentless smears, you know, oftentimes that come from The View, such as Meghan McCain's accusation that Ilhan Omar was anti-Semitic. We're defending women. Uh, we also are rallying around female candidates across the country, helping them to get elected. I'm talking about Melanie Dorigo, Amanda Seabee, women across the country who are running for Congress. You see, the thing is, we criticize people based on policy and substance, not identity unlike you. And you claim to be this Republican who's against woke culture, but yet you're embracing that if it suits your political narrative. And you know, this just goes to show you that they have nothing. And it's so funny, like this is kind of related to this. So I want to go off on a little bit of a tangent if you'll indulge me for a moment. I was browsing Reddit and um, I stumbled upon a thread in the Democrat subreddit where basically they call out a bunch of indie media uh, hosts, myself included. I was specifically cited because we're being a little bit too harsh on Pete Buttigieg. And one of the comments really stood out to me. One of the most interesting parts of 2019 was seeing how blatantly homophobic the far left is willing to get. And that's not the first time that I've been accused of being homophobic for criticizing Pete Buttigieg's policies. Now, for those of you who are longtime viewers, you know automatically why that's absolutely ridiculous. But for those of you who are new, I am a member of the LGBTQ community. I am gay. I've been gay married longer than Pete Buttigieg, but yet because I criticized him based on the policies, well, because I am criticizing someone who is gay, by definition, that's homophobic and you shouldn't do it. No, that is bullshit, and the only people who make that type of argument are the individuals who don't have any other way to argue for their candidate or any policies that are better than ours. So when it comes to just debating the policy substance, 10 times out of 10, we win that discussion. So this is why you have to pander to people and claim that anyone who criticizes an individual from a marginalized community is automatically bigoted. Well, you have to do that because you have nothing else. Now getting to the rest of the segment here. So Joy Behar amazingly said after the Howard Stern interview, we've seen the true Hillary. And she's fabulous. Joy. Delete yourself. I don't know what else to say about that. Like, everyone was irritated by that interview because she came across as a bitter, salty person who can't get over the fact that she lost to the biggest clown in America. But you think that she came across as fabulous? That says a lot about you, Joy. Now, Sonny Hostin said, I think that it's important for people to note that Bernie registered to run for the Senate in 2024 as an independent, yet is running for the president as a Democrat. He is Democrat by default. I don't know what it is about this argument, but people in media think that it's persuasive, but nobody cares. We have a two-party duopoly, and the only reason why individuals such as myself are registered as Democrats is because we have to be, because I live in a closed primary state right? We have to support these two parties if we want to elect someone who's going to get power because we don't have proportional representation. So you're not convincing anyone. In fact, Democrats and Republicans are less popular than the independent label. More people identify as independent now. So you're not convincing anyone 
people aren't Democratic Party loyalists like you are, contrary to popular belief, right? Just being not Republican isn't enough for most people. So when you say this, it is absolutely meaningless and it resonates with basically no one. Now, Whoopi chimed in and said, look, if you're a socialist, find other people, people in your party to support you. Don't say you're a Democrat and then try to poop all over the Democratic folks. Now, I don't know why whenever Whoopi Goldberg talks about politics, she has to invoke uh, either poop or pee when talking about progressives, but it's incredibly weird. Um, she, she must have some sort of like scat kink or whatever, but that's besides the point. She's saying this now, but I guarantee you, um, if Joe Biden is the nominee, she's going to be one of the loudest people crying for all of us to fall in line and support the candidate that uh, we didn't support in the primary. I guarantee it. And look, learn about politics, Will be educate yourself because we live in a two-party system not because we want only two parties but because the institutions create what is known as Duverger's law it's a majoritarian winner-take-all system where there's basically two parties and uh that's it any third party is marginalized they are institutionally disadvantaged and yes we should work to change that we need ranked choice voting we need proportional representation we need a district magnitude of at least three uh, but she's saying this, oh, well, you know, get out of my party. I don't want you here. Be careful what you wish for, because if you tell that to enough people, they will listen to you and they will stay home and not vote if the Democrat is the nominee. And then you're going to whine about Trump getting reelected after you told them to fuck off, fuck out of your party. Well, guess what? How about this? We're going to take over the Democratic Party, whether you like it or not. And all of you elitists can leave the Democratic Party, because when you're rich, when you are a multimillionaire, you don't need a political party. You do not need a party to represent your interests in government because let me remind you, if you have tens of millions of dollars, there is not a single thing that the government can do that will substantially change your life. Yes, you may benefit from Donald Trump's tax cuts, but guess what? That isn't as substantial of an impact on your life as having a Bernie Sanders president would be on our lives right? So you don't need a political party. So why don't you get the fuck out of the Democratic Party, right? Because nobody cares about the Democratic Party. We're not loyal to the Democratic Party. We care about policies and we do not worship politicians and play team politics, unlike hacks like you who have nothing else because you don't care about policy. And it's probably because you don't know jack shit about policy. So I mean, I don't even know why I take the time to focus on the view, but I feel as if I have to call it out because at this point, like when you look at Fox News, it's a clown show. A lot of Americans, well-intentioned liberals, don't take Fox News seriously. However, The View is a show that Americans do take seriously. It has a lot of influence. They get millions of viewers every single day. So I feel the need to speak out when they spread this type of harmful toxicity, right? Especially when Donald Trump is president. So if I can convert like even just one viewer of The View, I feel like this segment will be worthwhile. But, um, you know, that's wishful thinking because if you watch this show religiously, then um, I don't know if you're even gettable at this point with how toxic that show has become. They've brainwashed a lot of people who watch it um, and they've been brainwashed by individuals who don't really know about policy or politics and individuals who are just there because they have, uh, you know, famous parents like John McCain. My father. Uh, that's her father. My father. Uh, we have Abby Huntsman, who, you know, is also the daughter of a politician. It's just, I mean... They represent everything wrong with American politics, and they're just, they're the worst. <laughs> they're the worst, and I genuinely hope that The View gets canceled, <laughs> and I don't care. I know the first comment is going to be, Mike is joining in on cancel culture. I don't care. I genuinely would like to celebrate if the show got canceled. I'm sure it would be replaced by something even worse, but I don't care. Cancel them. They suck. Um, they're just, they're bad for the country. My father, 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 my father